Hello and good evening. Thank you for joining us. The topic for tonight is happiness, liberty, and peace. All beings on this planet, without exception, want to be happy, free, and at peace. How does one achieve it? Unfortunately, many are those mistaken ones who do not know what authentic happiness is. They chase after fleeting desires or constantly avoid what brings them displeasure. All the while, these actions increase their suffering because they do not know how to bring about authentic happiness, liberty, and internal peace. People work daily, struggle to survive. They want to exist in some way, but are not happy. This subject of happiness is challenging and confusing, and the worst is people know it. But in the midst of such bitterness, it seems that they do not lose hope of achieving happiness one day, but they do not know how. They want to live, and they fear losing their lives. If people understood something about revolutionary psychology, possibly they would even think differently. But in truth, they know nothing. They want to survive in the midst of their misfortune, and that is all. There are many pleasant moments, but that is not happiness. People confuse pleasure with happiness. There is superficial happiness and there is innate joy, real happiness that comes from within. The superficial type of happiness belongs to the law of the pendulum. This happiness is subject to change and is dependent on things, people, situations, and circumstances outside of us. When you experience this type of happiness, one may feel happy, but when you analyze it closely, you can see that form of happiness depends on the external, which is subject to change and is really a form of suffering. For example, when you buy a new home, you are very happy in that moment because you finally achieved it. Then, unexpectedly, things break. The roof leaks and causes damage, or your home needs maintenance and you may not have the funds to do the work in that moment. Now that object of happiness had become a source of suffering. Another example is you're seeking higher education because your parents and elders tell you, if you do this, you'll have a good job and be someone. Behind these motives of your parents are fear that if you do, don't go to college, you will not have a good job and you will not be able to take care of yourself or have a prosperous future. So you get a student loan and you complete school in something that may or may not be your vocation. You finish school with honors and you're very happy and your family is very proud that you have got your diploma. Now you get that job and you have a huge student loan debt that you can't pay back. You end up with that eight to five job that you don't even love and now you have to contribute to a loan that takes many years of work and sacrifice to pay off, leaving you with very little budget to use freely. Was this real happiness if it resulted in this kind of suffering? Or how about that perfect relationship? You get married to that perfect spouse and then it turns into bitterness and quarrels. What happened to that initial happiness that you first experienced in the beginning of your relationship. Was it real love and happiness? If so, then why did it change? If it is real happiness, it is not subject to the law of impermanence. Real happiness does not depend on any outside source. It does not depend on winning the lottery and having a lot of money. Both the rich and the poor suffer. Some people seek happiness through parties or through wholesome family gatherings, but this is not happiness either. Authentic happiness does not depend on circumstances, on relationships, careers, or whether or not your child is obedient or the perfect student. Real happiness is eternal and it will never disappoint you. Real happiness transcends duality good and bad, favorable and unfavorable. It is always reliable 
and it is eternal. All happiness comes from selflessness, virtues, the being. All suffering arises from selfishness, vices, and the ego. Everything is transitory in life, like a rainbow. It comes and it goes, just like all things in life. Things pass, people, ideas. Those who have money pass, and those who do not have it also pass, and nobody knows true happiness. Many want to escape themselves through drugs, alcohol, but in truth, not only do they not get such an escape, but what is worse is that they, they condition their consciousness and as a result, they become trapped in a psychological state of hell in that particular vice. Running away from the myself, my vices, my affections, which causes so much pain in the heart, or my worries and my concerns that make me sick. When these psychological elements of selfishness no longer exist, it becomes clear that something new emerges that is not of time, which is beyond the body, the affections, and the mind. When we disintegrate the concept of self, that my, what emerges is that which is really unknown to the understanding and is called happiness. Authentic happiness exists beyond time and space. It is not dependent on anything, it just is. But as long as the consciousness is trapped in selfishness, the I, or the myself, one cannot know that authentic happiness. To experience it, there has to be a cessation of self. Freedom. Freedom is something that must be achieved within oneself. Freedom is a beautiful word, a beautiful term. How many crimes have been committed in its name? Unquestionably, the term freedom has hypnotized many people. The mountains, the valleys, the rivers, and the seas have been stained with blood in the name of freedom. How many flags, how much blood, and how many heroes have happened in the course of history? Each time the question of freedom has been raised on the table of life. Unfortunately, independence at such a high price was achieved, but slavery continues within each person. Who is really free? The adolescent yearns for freedom. It seems incredible that many times, having food, clothing, and shelter, he wants to run away from his father's home in search of freedom. He is fascinated by the term freedom. Instead, he gives up all of his comforts in a happy home to be immersed in pain. The employee, tired of so many regulations, wants to be free, and he manages to become independent. However, he finds himself with new problems, and he continues to be a slave to his own interests and concerns. Certainly, Every time we fight for freedom, we find ourselves disappointed despite the victories. So much blood is uselessly shed in the name of freedom, and yet we continue to be slaves to ourselves and others. People fight over words that they never understand. Freedom is something that must be achieved within oneself. So what is slavery? As long as the consciousness, the essence, the most worthy and decent thing that we have inside of us continues to be bottled up in the self, in the myself, in my desires and passions, in my concerns and violence, in my psychological defects, then we will always be in prison, in slavery. The meaning of freedom 
can only be understood when the shackles of our own psychological prison has been annihilated. The consciousness devoid of I in the absolute absence of myself without desires, without passions, without cravings or fear directly experiences true freedom. Any and all concepts about freedom is not freedom. Many opinions about freedom are far from being the reality. The idea that we force on the subject of freedom have nothing to do with authentic freedom. Freedom is something that we have to experience directly, and this is only possible by dying psychologically, dissolving the false self. It is better to see ourselves as we are, carefully observing all these shackles of slavery that keep us enslaved. When you are enslaved, you know this because it produces suffering and disharmony. If we put forth a super effort to end the actions that produce suffering within us, then through that knowing of your true self, you can discover and experience the door of authentic freedom. Peace. Peace does not usually come through the mind because it is not of the mind. Peace is the delicious perfume of the heart. Peace is not an international treaties or invading armies that fight in the name of peace. If we really want true peace, we must learn to be vigilant from moment to moment. We should observe like a lookout in the times of war with an alert mind because peace is not a matter of romantic fantasies or a matter of beautiful daydreams. If we do not learn to live in a state of awareness of oneself from moment to moment, then the path that leads to peace becomes impossible. It is necessary to understand. It is urgent to know that the authentic peace of a calm heart is not a goal or a place. Pursuing peace, seeking it, making projects about it, fighting on its behalf, ma making propaganda about it, and establishing organizations to work for it is totally absurd because peace is not of the mind. Peace is the wonderful perfume of the calm heart. Peace cannot be bought or sold, nor can it be achieved with the appeasement system, special controls, or with the police. In some countries, the national army walks through the fields destroying towns, murdering people, and shooting alleged thieves. Alleged thieves. All this allegedly is in the name of peace. The result of such a procedure is the multiplication of barbarism. Violence breeds more violence. Hate breeds more hate. Peace cannot be conquered. Peace cannot be the result of violence. Peace only comes to us when we dissolve the self, when we destroy within ourselves all the psychological factors that produce war. If we want peace, we have to contemplate, we have to study, we have to see the whole picture and not just a part of it. Peace is born in us when we have radically changed in an intimate way. The question of controls, pro-peace organizations, appeasement, or isolated details, together in the ocean of life, isolated fractions of the total picture of existence which can never solve the problem of peace in its radical form, complete and definitive. We must look at the picture in its complete form. The problem of the world is the problem of the individual. If the individual does not have peace within him, society, the world will inevitably live in constant war. It is urgent it is essential to point out to the students of the new generation the path to follow, 
the intimate path that can lead us with complete accuracy to the authentic peace of the calm heart. There are true teachers of humanity who sacrifice themselves, teaching in all places on earth the doctrine of the dissolution of the self. Those masters know from their own experience that only by dissolving the inhumane elements within does true peace of the heart come to us. Peace is the delicious aroma of the tranquil heart. People do not really know how to understand what true inner peace is. They only want that no one gets in their way, that they are not hindered, that they are not bothered, even when they take their right to hinder and annoy and to embitter the lives of their fellow men. People have never experienced true peace and have only absurd opinions, romantic ideals, misconceptions about it. For thieves, peace would be the joy of being able to steal with impunity without the police getting in their way. For smugglers, peace would mean being able to smuggle contraband everywhere without being stopped by the authorities. For prostitutes, peace would mean enjoying their bed of pleasures and exploiting all men freely without the health or police authorities intervening in their lives at all. Each one forms in their mind 50,000 absurd fantasies about peace. Each one tries to build around himself an egotistical wall of false ideas, beliefs, opinions, and absurd concepts about what peace is. Everyone wants peace in their own way, according to their cravings, their tastes, their habits, and wrong customs. Each one wants to enclose himself within a prote protective, fantastic wall with the purpose of living his own peace, mistakenly conceived. People fight for peace. They want it, but they don't know what peace is. People just want to be disturbed, not to be disturbed, to be able to do their work very calmly at their ease. That is what they call peace. As long as hatred and greed, envy, jealousy, ambition, anger, pride, lust, and any of these other defects and vices exist, there will inevitably be wars. We must put an end to the weakness, these psychological factors within ourselves if we wish to know authentic peace. Authentic peace comes from beauty wisely understood. The beauty of the calm heart exhales, exhales the delicious perfume of true inner peace. It is urgent to understand the beauty of friendship and the perfume of courtesy. It is urgent to understand the beauty of language. It is necessary that our words carry within themselves the substance of sincerity we should never use inharmonious, rude, or absurd words. Every word must be a true symphony. Every sentence must be full of spiritual beauty. It is a, as bad to speak when one should be silent as it is to be silent when one should speak. There are criminal silences and there are infamous words. There are times when speaking is a crime, and there are times when being silent is also a crime. Let's not play with the words because it's a serious responsibility. Every word must be weighed before being articulated because every word can produce a lot of benefits and it can also produce a lot of harm. We must take care of our gestures, manners, clothing, and acts of all kinds. May our gestures, our dress, the way we sit at the table, the way we behave when eating, the way we serve people in the room, in the office, on the street, be full of beauty and harmony. It is necessary to understand the beauty of goodness, to feel the beauty of good music, to love the beauty of creative art, to refine our way of thinking, feeling, and acting. 
The supreme beauty can only be born in us when the I has died in a radical, total, and definitive way. For our spiritual practice, we're going to learn the morning prayer. We recommend that you memorize this simple prayer so that you can recite it every morning before getting out of bed. When we say it, we want to say it with enthusiasm, force, and energy. The Master Samael Onbior says, Recite this simple prayer and you will see that you are prosperous in everything. Have a great devotion in this prayer. Have faith. It is necessary to abandon the bad habit of talking about ourselves at every moment. It is urgent to employ the word to strengthen and encourage the good qualities of our fellow man. The Gnostic students should abandon the extremely bad habit of naming himself and telling the story of his life at every moment. The man or woman who only talks of himself or herself becomes unbearable. Persons like this fall into misery because people become tired of them. Never say I. Always say we. The term we has more cosmic power. The term I is egotistical and tires all those who come in contact with us. The I is egotistical. The I should be dissolved. The I is a creator of conflicts and problems. Always repeat we, we, we. So we're going to do this prayer. We're going to say this prayer once together. Here we go. We are strong, we are rich, we are filled with luck and harmony. Om. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. For further study, we recommend the Great Rebellion and the Fundamentals Education. The practice with the morning prayer can be found in the introduction to Gnosis. We wish you every happiness, good fortune, and success in all your activities. May all beings be happy and free, and may all be auspicious. Thank you.